What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I'm just jumping in with a quick heads up. As I mentioned at the start of the week, I am away for a couple of days, and we didn't want to leave you hanging with the news, the twab, and all that good stuff, so my friend Jarv has kindly offered to jump in and cover a couple of bits for us. This way you don't miss out on any of the new stuff, and Jarv also has a fantastic channel with a bunch of Destiny content as well. So that's going to be linked below, and instead of just posting this video with someone else kind of introing it, I figured I'd give you a little bit of a heads up first. So as always, thank you guys for the support, but now over to Jarv who's got the news for us today. Firstly, a special thank you to Houndish. I really appreciate this opportunity. So as we know, guys, this week has been a little busier on the news front and Bungie shows no sign of stopping with this week at Bungie. So we get a bunch of details about the Garden of Salvation raid and the contest modifier that will be launching alongside that, a fix to an annoying UI bug and how Destiny 2 will launch over on Steam from October 1st, as well as a few other things to round up in this video, guys. So if you enjoy the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps us out here on the channel. But without further delay, let's jump into it. So earlier this week, Bungie released their latest Vidoc, which talked about Shadowkeep, what's coming in year three, and the future timeline for Destiny 2. Now Houndish covered this and all the juicy details from the Vidoc in a video earlier this week. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below if you haven't checked that out already. And in the TWAB this week though, Bungie kick it off by saying that on Saturday, October 5th, Guardians will venture into a new raid, the Garden of Salvation. Many of you have seen the Black Garden before, but don't be fooled, this is an entirely new challenge that awaits us. Contest mode will be active for the first 24 hours, similar to the Crown of Sorrow World First competition. While contest is active, players will face an enforced challenge throughout the raid. Power beyond certain levels will provide no additional advantage for any given fight, for example, for the first fight, any power above 890 doesn't provide an advantage. And for the final fight, power above 920 doesn't provide an advantage either. After the 24 hour period ends, contest mode will be disabled and players can take full advantage of their higher power to overcome the raid's challenges. As always, Bungie will be watching as far teams race to claim the prestige world first to complete the raid. The prize, besides bragging rights of course, will be a custom made Garden of Salvation World First Belt and we get to see a picture of it just here. If you're not the first though, you don't have to be the last either. All Guardians who complete the raid within the first 24 hours will be able to show off this exclusive emblem as you can see. And there's also an emblem available to anyone who completes the raid at their leisure and that's what we can see here. So that belt looks pretty awesome and those emblems don't look half bad either. So let me know your thoughts guys on the contest mode coming back and if you're going to be running for world first come October 5th. Bungie then go on to talk about an annoying bug in the UI where you would try to apply something like a shader or a mod and nothing would happen. The bar would fill up but the desired action would not be applied. Sometimes it would fail multiple times and I know personally I've experienced that many times. Now back in update 2.5.0, a fix for this was released. It worked, kind of, but any fix that doesn't completely solve the problem is no fix at all. Now Bungie have a fix that should squash this bug for good and that should come with Shadowkeep on October 1st. Now the dev team go on to explain the issue and exactly what they're doing to fix it. Now the inconsistency of the apply button stems from overly aggressive safety features designed to protect your character from any accidental UI interactions. Now the first safety feature was cursor movement detection. So if they noticed any amount of cursor movement while the button was being applied, it would cancel that to prevent you from accidentally applying your action to the wrong item. It's fairly easy to experience a small amount of movement, especially on a mouse while you're clicking a button. And this restriction impacted PC players much more than console players. They removed the cursor movement detection in 2.5.0 with only checks to see if the cursor had moved off an item. Now the second feature is a little bit more complicated. If you're applying a mod while you're holding down the button, a new mod shows up in your inventory at the start of the list and shifts all your other mods displayed in the UI over by one slot. Now the cursor is now hovering over a different mod, but the cursor hasn't moved. Now in this kind of situation, they want to make sure that we don't insert the wrong mod into the wrong item because that can't be undone currently. Now to protect against this, they cancel the action if they detect any change on the character page. So that's problematic because there's a myriad of stats that track and there's countless of things happening around you that can cause a number on your character page to change. 
Even if you're sitting in the orbit and you get clan XP notifications, that would be enough to cancel the apply button. Now, while the protection described also serves as a good general safety net, it's clearly reached its limits now. And in 2.6.0, their plan is to tweak that protection and solve the problem. Now, when they detect an update on the character page, it will check if your cursor is still hovering over the same item. If it is, then it won't cancel the action. So we're all good now. So hopefully that should be the end of that bug. Now finally, they go on to talk about preparing for launch and begin setting expectations on what Shadowkeep launch experience will look like for existing PC players on October 1st. Now on the 1st of October, prior to the official launch of Shadowkeep, Destiny 2 will be taken offline for maintenance on all platforms. Now during that maintenance window, PC players who have linked their Steam account to their Bungie Net profile will automatically have their Guardians and Silver transferred from Battle.net to Steam. Once the maintenance concludes, Shadowkeep has officially launched and PC players who have undergone the Steam linking will be able to launch Destiny 2 on Steam and immediately access their Guardian and Silver. However, migrated PC players should be aware that there will be a delay in transferring Destiny 2 Forsaken licenses from Battle.net to Steam. After the launch of Shadowkeep, Forsaken license transfers for Steam linked PC players will continue in the background until they're all complete. Now while that work is underway, PC players can access all Destiny 2 content not reliant on the Forsaken license, as well as the new Shadowkeep content if they own that on Steam. And of course, all new light content will be available to all players for free from the 1st of October. Now here they list exactly the examples of content that will and will not be available. So examples of forsaken content that will not be available to migrated PC players during that window is the forsaken campaign missions, forsaken quest content, the last wish raid and the shattered throne dungeon. They go on to show that examples of forsaken activities that will be available to players immediately since they'll be bundled in with new light. So that'd be things like Gambit playlist activities, Forsaken Strikes in the Strike Playlist, Forsaken Maps in Crucible for example, Patrols on the Tangled Shore and on the Dreaming City. Now a few more important details to note, players should also be aware that any Battle.net codes they possess for Destiny 2 must be redeemed on their Battle.net account before they perform their PC migration. Players who have already prepared for PC migration have until the start of Destiny 2 maintenance on the 1st of October to redeem any unused Battle.net codes. This is to make sure that you have your license transfer ready for your Steam account. Also, from October 1st, any existing PC player who links their Steam account to their Bungie profile will automatically be migrated forward to the Steam ecosystem. To prevent unintentional loss of Guardians, game licenses and Silver, it is imperative that all PC players make sure they're linking their correct Steam and Battle.net accounts to their Bungie profile. Lastly, they go on to explain how New Light will impact their existing progress for Red War, Curse of Osiris, Warmind, and the Forsaken campaigns. Now on October 1st, after Destiny 2 Update 2.6.0 rolls out, players who have not completed any of the above Destiny 2 campaigns will have progress towards these campaigns reset. For example, any player who has not completed the Forsaken campaign will have to restart that campaign after the maintenance window on October 1st. It's worth noting, however, that most end game activities will generally be available to players as soon as they unlock their corresponding destinations. This is part of the accelerated player progression that will be introduced with New Light on October 1st. And that pretty much wraps up the TWAB for this week. The hype train is well and truly about to leave the station, guys, and we are just one more TWAB away from Shadowkeep. We are so, so close. I can almost taste it. But let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you going to be jumping in on day one into the Garden of Salvation raid? Are you happy that the UI fix is finally in place for that annoying bug? And are you going to be ready for your PC campaign once Shadowkeep transfers to Steam on October 1st? I'm going to jump back into the game as always. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content. Otherwise, thanks again to Houndish for the opportunity and a huge thank you to you guys for tuning in and whatever you guys are up to, we hope you have an awesome day.